Hi boys and girls, we're so glad to see you today. Right now we're going to do a little paper folding called origami. Origami is the art of paper folding and you've done it. You don't think you have. Have you ever made a paper plane? I bet you have. That's paper folding. Right now we're going to make a lantern which is a regular symbol of Chinese New Year's. So all you do is take your paper, fold it in half, and you can mark an edge around here. Basically, I took about an inch all around. Then you take your scissors, and you can also mark it from inch to inch, and you cut up just to where your first mark is. And you can make them about half an inch or three quarters of an inch. You have paper in the goodie bag that the library has provided for you. So once you have these cut, all you're going to do is open it back up and get your glue or your tape. I like tape, but you can use glue as well. And then we'll use another piece of paper for the handle. Almost there. Now, if you're not comfortable with scissors, have an adult help you with this, okay? So basically, all I've done is cut all the way across, not through the top, then you open it up and make a circle. So you take this and you make a circle with it. See that? Then you can tape it or glue it. I do have glue. The tape is a little bit more sturdy. Now, if you really want to be cool about this, you can get one of those lights. Don't put a candle in here. That's a, that's a no-no. But you can put one of those LED lights. Ask mom and dad if they have one. And then you're going to tape this this way. Make sure the overlap is the same. Then we're gonna get a handle up here, and there is your lantern. Very easy. The tricky part is going to be not cutting all the way through. Now, I'd like to show you something that one of my kids in one of my classes made. This is a crown, right? Then it closes up into a circle. To a pyramid. Then it opens up into a, a wheel and then it opens back into a crown and a star. And this is called the never ending circle. And it's lots of fun. It takes about eight different pieces. So if you ever want to learn something like that, we have lots of wonderful books in the library. I know you want to go on the internet, but you know what? I love my library. It's so neat to be able to look and open and see the pictures and see colors, and you can take as long as you want, and the light does not hurt your eyes. The other thing I like about books is, on my origami books, it tells you exactly how to fold things. So if you really get it, get into origami, check this out. This is my bird. And here's the t-shirt. No, you can't wear it. But we have a t-shirt with a bow tie, isn't that cool? So what I'd like to do for you right now is teach you how to make a bow tie with a dollar bill. We're going to do a boat and that's a little bit easier. So basically we take a dollar bill, we fold one edge over because we want Washington right in the middle. So we're going to fold it in. First of all, we're going to fold it in half. So you have the dollar bill, then we're going to fold it in half this way. We're going to open it up and fold it again towards the middle. So you will have something that looks like this. Fold it in half again, then we're going to take the points and fold them down. Now from here, you may need one of our books to show you what to do, because it's a little bit tricky to tuck in the edges. But once you tuck those in, flip it over again, so it looks like a giant M or a pair of pants, however you want to look at it. Then we're going to fold the edges down again. 
And are you ready? One, two, three. Voila! There's Mr. Washington's face centered in the dollar bill. And that's all called origami. So there's a lot of things that you can do with paper. Now I've got some beautiful paper here. And origami is spelled O-R-I-G-A-M-I. There's, this one has little um, beach balls on it. They even make the, this kind specifically for the kids. These are pretty. They're kind of like rainbow variegated. And then of course, you could also buy pre-folded origami papers. Now this is what it looks like when you get it. You flip it over, and I bet you guys know what this is. All the kids know these are fortune tellers, the cootie catchers. And they're pre-folded for you, okay? All right, let me get a paper and show you how to make a book. So this is a book on origami. You can find these books sometimes at half price books in different bookstores or online. Now locally, you can buy these little packages. I think they're $1.50 at a store called Daiso, Daiso, D-A-I-S-O. And so for $1.50, you can also get the little books that show you how to fold. Now these big ones, I believe I bought at Hobby Lobby and they're about um, $12 a piece. So we're going to do a boat, which is something very easy for you to do. Now, you don't have to have the fancy paper. We started with newspaper when we were kids. And you can take any type of uh, typing paper. Don't take your report card or anything like that. All right, so you get a piece of paper, and if it's a square, you cut it in half. So if it's a square, all you have to do is cut it in half, like I have here. Then you're gonna take it. We have a pretty side here. First thing we're gonna do is fold it in half. And the way you fold is you take corner to corner, corner to corner. Once you have the corners, then you put your finger down the middle and go across. Don't go from one side to the other. Go to the middle because that's how you get a nice centered piece. Once you have this, you can use your fingernail to run across it. Now, since we have this, this is called a valley fold. This is called a mountain fold. Can you see why? All right, so with the mountain fold, we're gonna put it down and bring the bottom to meet the top. Again, hold the two edges, fingers in the middle, going across. Flip it over, same thing, match the corners, take your time. Fingers in the middle, run across. So now you have what looks like a W, or if you're like me, M for my name, okay? Once you have this, you're going to put it down and do this on the table. I'm going to do this up here so you can see. You're going to take where it's open here, where you have two valleys, and here where you have one valley. So where you have the one valley, put it downward. You're going to take the corner and very carefully fold it up like this. You're gonna take the other side and fold it the same way. So basically from this, you're just going to make a triangle. See that? Triangle. That's a square, it comes up to a triangle. You're going to do the same thing to the other side. Now, once you do that, here's the little bit tricky part. You see where we've taken this and turned it up so it makes a triangle? Now, I want you to take this triangle from the bottom I want you to fold it in half again. So basically, if you put your finger up here, you'll be able to just fold it up and you'll get this. Same with the other side. You're gonna basically fold that triangle in half and push it like this. And like I said, if you do it in a table, it's much, much easier. Then we're gonna do the same thing with the other side. Remember, it was a uh, rectangle like this, fold it in half, and then we're gonna fold it in half again with the top lines matching. All right, almost there. So you have one, two, three, one more side to go. Then you're gonna take it again and fold it up. Now here's the tricky part. Use your fingernail or you can use a popsicle stick. You might wanna eat a popsicle first. Paper and popsicles don't go together. All right, so now that you've got this, you can see where the bottom has just one flap, but on the other side, if you look, 
there's two flaps there. It looks like a catamaran, doesn't it? A catamaran is a kind of a sailboat that has two long sections. So now, here's the trick. You're going to put your fingers like this. And you're gonna come way up at the top and you're gonna hold it really tight. You're gonna take these fingers from underneath and you're gonna push up. See that? We're gonna do it again with this side. Put your thumbs in there, pinch, pinch, pinch it like this. Now with these fingers, you're gonna push up, push it up, straighten it out. And there is your rowboat. And you can make these all in different sizes. Now, one thing we used to do way back was you could take wax paper and attach it to um, regular paper. Oh, we have waterproof it and just float. And that's our rowboat. Our library is so wonderful because we've got an awesome amount of books. And there's so much knowledge here. This is a great one. It's called Celebrating Chinese New Year. Now, people always ask, why is Chinese New Year's always on a different day? We all know when New Year's Eve is, it's always December 31st. And New Year's Day is January 1st. Well, the Chinese calendar is a little bit different. The Chinese New Year's begins with the second new moon after the winter solstice and ends with the Lantern Festival held at the full moon two weeks later. So it's a full 14, 15 day celebration. Isn't that fun to be out of school and celebrate for that long? Now this comes from the Celebrating Chinese New Year book and it will be up here if you'd like to check it out. And we have all these wonderful other books here, all different ages. And the one we're going to do today is called Chinese New Year's. And this is appropriate for all ages. Now, for Chinese New Year's, we do a festival. So what is a festival? A festival is a time when people come together to celebrate. Chinese people celebrate New Year in January or February. So this year, it's in February. And because it depends on the moon, it's a little bit different every year. People say goodbye to the old year and they hope for good luck in the new year. The new year celebration lasts up to 15 days. It's a time for visiting family and people eat a special meal. We have food that we may not get the rest of the year, kind of like Thanksgiving and Christmas, Christmas cookies especially and people wear new clothes, especially red. Red is a sign of good luck in Chinese culture. Just like every culture has their own little traditions. Now, one that's really fun is there are lion dances. No, Simba isn't coming here, but we do have these awesome lion heads that are huge and colorful and gold. And how do they move? Well, there are awesome dancers that are underneath and it would, you would be amazed at what a workout they have. And it's awesome because the lions are dancing everywhere. And people give gifts. I know you like that. I like that too. And here, normally it's the children that get the gifts and they're normally red envelopes filled with, you got it, money. So people get envelopes with money in them and also watch fireworks. Fireworks are a big part of New Year's celebration. So to bring good luck, people clean their houses for New Year's. They believe clean houses will bring them good luck. And I'm sure a clean room will bring you good luck too with your mom and dad. Red is a lucky color in China. People hang red banners and the words bring good luck. Usually it's red with gold. And the Lantern Festival is the last day. So that's why we make lanterns. It's the last day of the festival. So it's a long celebration. 
colorful lanterns light up the sky. And this book will be here for you to check out if you'd like. So thank you so much for joining us and we wish you a wonderful Chinese New Year, whether you celebrate or not. It's always good to have food too. Thank you and go hei bai choi.